Hi, welcome to Tri-Cities Community TV. I'm Kathy Chenna, and we are filming from the offices of the Fountainhead Network. My guests today are from the People's Pantry Food Recovery Society. We have Christy DeYoung with us, as well as Glenn Pollock. Many of you may know him as Councillor Glenn Pollock in Port Coquitlam. But today they both come to us to talk about food security and so much more with the People's Pantry and what is happening. So tell us a little bit about uh, what is the People's Pantry? Who, who wants to start? Christy? People's Pantry is a, or an organization that seeks to be a bridge between organizations that struggle with food waste and uh, populations that are struggling with food security. Mm -hmm. So uh, kind of in the easy <laughs> little elevator pitch, that's that's kind of what it is. Okay, and are you helping people just in the Tri-Cities or like where where is it? I, I haven't really heard much about it to be honest and the, the first time I read about it really was um, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later. I know that you guys were nominated for Nonprofit of the Year, but I, I had no idea what it what is this. And then I started to see some of your posts, and then I thought, oh, Christy's involved with this, and what's happening? And like, so so please share because I I feel like I'm pretty tapped into social media and what's going on out there, and maybe some people aren't, and maybe they don't know like a lot about what you guys are doing. Are you similar to a food bank? Kind of. We. I mean, I think. I, I don't want to downplay the, the, uh, what food banks do. They do a great service in the community. But when you go to a food bank, you get a lot of dry goods, canned stuff, dried pasta. People who access the people's pantry hampers get uh, frozen meat. We freeze the meat products as we access them. They get fresh fruit and vegetables. They get fresh uh, baked goods dairy. and dairy products, yeah. And um, it's, uh, we're currently feeding about 350 people, I think yeah. was the last stat. 193 of those are children. Uh, we have a wait list we always have, and it's just, it's staggering. Like I worked for Safeway. The way this started was Christy's idea, um, and I met her through, through uh, when she was doing, working for... Uh, snapped. Probably. Snapped, and uh, yeah, and uh, she suggested um, uh, this would be a great idea, and, and I agreed with her, although I was shocked at first. We, when we first started, we immediately got 16 skids of frozen, <laughs> frozen uh, 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 vegan. vegan products. And I said to Christy and Pam, the, th the third stooge that started this, I said, say no, what are we gonna do with 16 skins of frozen vegan products? But we managed to, I talked yeah. to Cisco and they stored them for us. We managed to distribute all those and they were actually, some of them were quite popular. But, but um, it was Christy's idea initially, and I, but I worked for Safeway for 32 years and saw the food waste. And so that's the other big component. We're like, Christy mentioned, we're feeding people, but it's, we, we recovered 163,000 pounds of food last year. We weigh it coming in the door for, granting processes and we, we, we recovered 163,000 pounds of food. That's amazing, I think. Food that is going to spoil, that's going to waste, yeah. that they're just going to... Well, it reaches, it nears its best before date. Yes. So yeah. it, although it's still viable, healthy nutrition, because it's too close for stores to sell, it's yeah. going to go to the landfill. Like, so where are you located and what's your biggest uh, obstacle right now at the People's Pantry? What? We're in Port Coquitlam in the Elks Hall currently. We do um, support families within the whole Tri-Cities um, area. The, probably our biggest right now is going to be home. <laughs> yeah. The Elks Hall's aging. It's showing it's, it's had its best day and so we're looking for a new home that can better space. support our needs. Yeah, mm -hmm. just a new space. Okay, so you're in Port Coquitlam at the Elks Hall. And if a person, you know, you said you have a wait list. Yeah. So is there an application process? Do they go online? Do they fill, Do they just show up on what days? How, how does it work? So they would go online um, or call the office if they don't have access to, to computer and just there is an application process and then they go on the wait list. Um, the food pickup, is it just, no, it's Sunday? Sundays, yeah. Just Sundays? Yeah, just Sundays right, right now, yeah. Okay, so on yeah. Sundays, people would come and line up and they get their hamper of food with well, these Sunday, items Monday in? Well, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We pick up the, we recover the food from the stores on Sunday. It gets sorted, it gets frozen, just, you know, packed right. Right. in whatever refrigeration it needs. Sorted, because some of it is still, you know, it is, you know, the thing is, you can have one apple and a bag of apples and the store will get rid of the whole bag of apples, but yeah. it's really just the one apple. So they we'll... Did, they did that a while ago where we got a... A one retailer donate like a whole almost a pallet of strawberries with a moldy one you know, almost one moldy one to each container and there was those big containers of strawberries for like 10 bucks or something yeah. and we said so we just opened one is the and take replaced the moldy them and, one and, away and they go. were fine right so 
So th that kind of stuff goes on, and then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it gets distributed to people. They're given a day. I think Thursday we also support a few other food organizations yep. because we have excess, like Glenn was saying, 163,000 pounds. Yep. That amounts to about 12 to 1,500 kilograms a week yep. of food we're rescuing. So we do have uh, some excess, so we do support some other food organizations with yep. what we don't need, have need of. Right, okay, okay. And um, who are some of the organizations that you're going to that are donating? They're donating the food that's going to go to waste, right? Am I understanding yeah. that correctly? Costco, Save On Foods, Meridian Meats, yep. Cobb's Bakery. And they're all amazing that they, uh, they are, it's, all, it's amazing that they donate this food to all of them. They have different reasons. Like Cobb's Bakery doesn't keep it. They no, no, they don't. Yeah. And then they all yes. Close yes. And yeah. They've been doing that for years and years and years. So it's a win-win-win. I see, like with them, because they they do bake. There's no day old anything. Yeah. And if it is, it's there, and you're buying it that day, or they're giving it yeah. to you. Yeah. Right. And and Save One and Costco, I think they just they, they they there's no business case for them to go through and sort the strawberries like we do. We have volunteers do that. It's easier for them to discard. An item, and, and that's the part where I, when I worked for Safeway, I, I just was staggered by it was the amount of waste. And I, I when I was there, I, I worked with a couple of nonprofits in East Van. I worked at last Safeway. Worked, I was at Kingsway and Joyce in Vancouver, and I worked with a couple of charities, Carlton Elementary School. I did a help with a breakfast program. And so, you know, some of it was going away, but but now it's it, we're not alone in this. There's tons of organizations doing this, and yeah, and we need two things: we need a new home, and we need funding. And we're we're browbeating the provincial government repeatedly for funding for sustainable you know funding so mm -hmm. uh, do you guys qualify for the gaming grants and things like that we're, yeah well, we write for everything we can yes we <laughs> for everything we christy's can. written a lot of our grants and we have other people and we're, and we're talking about actually employing a grant mm. writer oh, okay okay so, yeah so when did you um when 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 was the people's pantry founded 2020, May 4th. Yeah, May 4th. 2020, okay, so just a few years old, really. And recently, you guys became finalists for the Business Excellence Awards with the Tri City Chamber of Commerce under the Nonprofit of the Year category, um, along with some, some other like standing, you know, organizations as well. And um, obviously, there was a good writer in writing that application up. So <laughs> we yeah. had a few people, I think, nominate us. Yeah, that's amazing. And so how did that make you feel? I mean, I mean, they get so many entries. And to be a finalist, obviously, there's a group of judges that, that choose this. And they go through a very thorough you know, process. And when you were um, seen as finalists, like, how did you guys feel about that? Well, it's always exciting, especially because we're like babies in the world of yeah. nonprofit exactly. organizations, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, it's to, great to be recognized in your city. That quickly yeah. and that quickly because, well, I guess we're third year now. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's amazing. But the, the greatest gratification of the whole thing is when you see somebody you're helping and the appreciation. Like when we, the first year we did turkeys at Christmas and mm -hmm. Christmas hampers and because we were just fledgling then. We were only, I think we were feeding like 30 families. Something like that. And so, we, uh, you know, we got uh, some money donated and bought turkeys and... Um, Turkeys or uh, roasts or hams, yeah, and uh, and I delivered them to some of the. You asked where we go. I, I was over in it was almost into Burnaby. It was over by Lowheed Mall and some subsidized housing over there. And the woman broke down. She said, "I wouldn't have Christmas dinner if it wasn't for you guys." And that's just you, that's just amazing, right? That you don't do it for that, but that's yeah. crazy. But um, yeah, I, and that I want to make another point that um, our volunteers do an amazing job of accommodating for people's dietary restrictions and stuff. So we had. I delivered a lot of hampers that year and if, around Christmas, and we had, you know, we had we have some seniors, and one guy said, "I don't need a whole, a whole uh, a turkey." He said, "We just he had a roast chicken and potatoes and stuffing and stuff," yeah. but it was because it was for one senior living on his own, and you know, so it's 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 amazing that that. Some some organizations, um, I uh, volunteered for the Optimist uh, Club. Uh, back in, in Burnaby uh, about 15 years ago and uh, we put together some hampers and um, one of the criticisms that we got for example was you know people don't know how to make stuffing out of a box <laughs> like these are our organi um, sorry these are humans that are coming from different countries and they, they don't know how to how to cook X and Y and you know KD isn't a thing anymore and you know how do you make macaroni and cheese or how do you do this now are you do you guys differ a little bit in in the sense of you know are you putting 
putting in like staple things in these hampers? Are they pre-done, the hampers, um, in terms of what people are looking for? Like besides this gentleman, like that would be wasting food upon waste if you're just a single individual yeah. getting a big turkey for yourself, right? Yeah. So when people come, do they come with some kind of like criteria um, or are the hampers made They're almost right. identical? No, 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 the hampers are made per family. Per family, okay. I'm a family of four. Uh, we are allergic to gluten, you know, things like that. And even yeah. religious, they even take into place, yes. yeah, into consideration yeah. religious um, beliefs yeah. around food. I don't know how people are affording groceries on a single income, let alone a double income. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. And, and I, I think um, I've tried to go after the grocery industry. Uh, I've tried to go after two, two big kind of levels of, of government and industry. Uh, I think we should be being supported by the by the grocery industry to some degree because we're taking away they're not having to pay someone to take away those perishables uh, and that, so that's one thing I've, I've tried to go down after the, the BC grocery industry and I'm not, not getting anywhere and the other um, people who've gone after is Metro Vancouver because they they take care of the waste and they're trying Metro Vancouver has a mandate to remove all uh, organics from the waste stream by I think it's 2040 yeah. and it might be sooner than that uh, but um, we're, we're removing 163,000 pounds from the, so there's, that's some organic. So, the, I mean, it, you know, they, I think those two industries should be supporting food recovery societies, not just us, but all the other people doing work, uh, the same work in the in communities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So your issues right now are not so much that, you know, you need more food to feed more people out there. It's more about the space that you're in and um, it is, regardless of, of the Elks uh, location in terms of it being an older building, um, are you looking for a larger space as well? We need larger. It's, in fact, it's huge. In fact, right now, it's not just us in there. Backpack no. Buddies are in there on United Way. Okay. There's three of us operating out of there. So, and I, and, and I don't want to, I'd like to find a, bit, a, a similar sized place to house all three of us, but my main concern is the people's pantry. So I think we could do with two or 3,000 square feet. But, because uh, we have nine re freezers, refrigerators, nine or 10, freezers and refrigerators and then we have our tables we work on and we try not to store anything uh, that isn't frozen we try and distribute everything so that there's nothing sitting around out you know to attract pests or anything of course, of course. yeah or and spoil. we're spoiled yeah so uh, everything's either frozen or refrigerated or it's distributed uh, so we don't need a whole lot of space uh, but the, the Elks Hall isn't just old it's done it's <laughs> it has no heat it has no it, it, it's it's cold as a refrigerator in the winter and it's hot as an oven in the summer and yeah, and so, and you know what, I don't want to be critical of the cities, you know. They were very generous. They've been, we've been paid, they're free of charge for two years. And, and so, but, and I understand development happens and that's an old rundown building that's going to be developed. So, so I'll find us a new place. Yeah, you'll find yourselves a new place. And yeah. any last things that um, we may want uh, our viewers to, uh, to know about you guys before we uh, conclude? Uh, I'd just like to say how I can't. I don't want to name everybody because I'd forget everybody. But uh, but you're so th you're so thankful of of our volunteers and our board. We've got the most. This our board is just it's professional people. It's Christy and Pam and I, and then we populated the board. We've got a new board chair. Well, not new now. She's been around for a while. But Alice Hale, and uh, and the board. We've got a buddy of mine. It's an accountant. Another buddy of mine. There's a lawyer, and uh, there's a lawyer, and he's since moved on to something else. But we've just been really lucky that we've had a great board of really uh, hands-on people that, that have done what the work necessary to keep the thing moving forward. And, but especially the, the volunteers. Just, if you go down there on a Sunday, there's, there's seniors and there's kids that we have some kids for, that came from high schools to fill in their, to do their um, uh, volunteer. volunteer hours to, for graduation and they've stayed, you know, and around even after they, because they got passionate about it and see what's, what, what, you know, what's happening. So. That's, I want to thank all those people that have, um, and Christy, it was her idea, and she and Pam. So. Great. Christy, what's the website? Peoplespantry.ca or org? I think .ca. .ca. And we're on Facebook, the, too. The, the peoplespantry.ca. Yeah. And, and we're on Facebook, Facebook yeah. And so. Instagram and LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. They're on all the social media platforms. outlets. Yeah. 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 You can find. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. They're on all the social media outlets that you can find. You're listening to uh, Christy and Glenn today from the People's Pantry Food Recovery, Recovery Society. Society. Yes, it's a mouthful. I'll just call them the People's Pantry. Uh, check them out on their social media. If you want to volunteer um, and you need volunteer hours, uh, they would uh, be glad to accept you. But at the end of the day, one of their biggest concerns is uh, getting a new space so that they can store the food that they need to continue feeding families in the Tri-Cities. I'm Kathy Chana. Thanks so much for watching.